my friends, and welcome back to As Failed on TV. It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? In the time I've been gone from dunking on silly infomercials, I read a single book on marketing. And now I'm learned. And I've come to share this newfangled knowledge with the masses. And I'd like to start by covering a marketing campaign that started off terrible, had to adapt to current events, and then came out on the other side, uh, still terrible. But in order to fully grasp why this failure has happened, we need a little bit of backstory. Planters! This prop cost me $10. I'm gonna need some serious Patreon donations if I'm gonna make up for this sunk cost here. $2 donation will get you 24 hour early access to future videos, and $10 allows you to pick a topic within reason. Eh? Uh? Anyway. Obviously, we're gonna be talking about the Mr. Peanut Resurrection Multimedia Campaign. What it is, why it didn't work, and then just have a little bit of a laugh at the level of nearsightedness that was, frankly, inconceivable. But first, I think we need a little bit of an aside on mascot design. Now, the mascots that all stand the test of time have one very simple thing in common. There it is. Yeah, I, I said it. It's, it's simplicity. Now, I'm not going to come out here and say that humans as a species are an incredibly stupid bunch, even if you could look out your window and prove it to be true. What I am going to say is that our brains are programmed to recognize simple elements. For example, how many times have you grabbed a slice of pizza and then compared what remains to Pac-Man? How many times have you been scrolling through Facebook, concerned at the amount of data Zuck has been mining for the long, inevitable winter, only to be greeted with a guess the character quiz based on which silhouettes you see? Even without their dominant features visible, you can still guess who they are because your brain has associated certain shapes with certain characters. Mr. Peanut is one such design. He's an elegantly dressed peanut. His design is instantly recognizable, and it went into planters marketing the idea that eating their nuts... <sighs> okay, hold on. I see what's happening here. There's gonna be a fair amount of references to nuts in this video. Eating them, munching them, sucking the salt clean off of them. Nuts are funny. I get it. But we need to be serious here, okay? This is a serious discussion that we're having, so let's get the giggles out now. I award you this time to do so. Go ahead, laugh it up. Think about everything funny you can in regards to nuts. I understand, it's funny. You know something, it reminds me, is uh, when I first was going to record this, I, I had a cold open that I wrote for the video where after I introduced what the topic was, I was gonna eagerly say, let's bust this nut. And that's that's humorous, but I cut it out because this is, this is a, like I said, it's a serious, serious discussion. So, are we good? Good, let's move on. The idea is that Planters is a cut above. They're the fancy option, but they've also got a cartoon mascot and that could appeal to the kiddies. And this worked. Planters has incredibly recognizable branding with Mr. Peanut and also the royal blue coloring to their packaging. It adds to the regal air of the product. A plus. But you know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But there's also a second cousin twice removed saying, give me something to break, give me something to break, just give me something to break. It's all about the he said, she said bullshit. But enough backstory, let's take a look at some commercials. Now I've said this before, I find it perplexing that Super Bowl commercials have commercials that lead up to them. Like an astronomical amount of money is spent advertising the more astronomical amount of money spent advertising the real thing instead of just doing that once. Is that why this thing of cashews cost me so much money? Like, are, are we as a nation just paying the bill forward for planters? Anywho, the commercial commercial opens with a rideable nut cavorting down a serpentine canyon road. The Super Bowl, by the way, was in Miami. They're not close. But the group is doing what anyone would do on a long road trip from Arizona to Florida. I just died in your arms tonight. 
Bye. Listening to their best of cutting crew record while munching on Planters Brand Mixed Nuts. The perfect snack for those long road trip cravings. Mmm. I fuck with these cashews actually. This massive jar will be erased in a week. The vehicle swerves to miss an armadillo in the middle of the road, as you do, causing them to careen off the road, which forces the trio to abandon Nut. Then pesky physics and momentum take over, bringing them over a cliff where only a skinny branch is capable of saving them. Matt, let go. No, you let go. <sighs> hey, Mr. Peanut, no, you don't. No, Mr. Peanut, don't let go. Think of the brand. No! no! Easiest reference I'll ever make. It's like I never left 2013. I gotta say though, Mr. Peanut looks pretty proud of himself. He looks content with a full life, well lived. And that's fair. I mean, Mr. Peanut's been around since 1916. He can now die confident that he's leaving the world a better place than when he found it. Wink. And it's all thanks to Planters brand mixed nuts and assorted trail mixes. Well, that's just typical. You ditch your nut like that, and then any disturbance is liable to make it burst. But anyway, he's fucking dead. And now Planters wants to celebrate the Super Bowl, a day where the nation gets together to drink, party, and watch commercials with a musical interlude and nothing else, with a funeral for Mr. Peanut. Do you guys remember a few years ago when we all collectively dunked on Nationwide Insurance because they had that commercial with the little kid and he was like, I'm never going to do anything fun ever again because I fucking died. Well, the reason why people dunked on them for that is because death is kind of a downer. Hashtag hot takes only. It's a subject that should be treated with a little bit of reverence and people might not think that you're looking at it that way when your focus is on a death surrounding a cartoon peanut that wears a monocle. But okay, we're gonna do this. Let's bury Mr. Peanut, thankfully in a field and not like a cemetery which could piss some people off. I do find it a bit stark that he was buried in the first place. I mean, what did they bury? He exploded. I mean, surely it'd be easier to spread his ashes at this point. Did they just take a can of Planters brand mixed nuts and just cover it up? Like, I'm, I'm taking a look at that dirt mound right now. It is large and peanut shaped. I, raises some questions. Like, if they, if they did bury remains or perhaps something ceremonial in a coffin, was the coffin peanut shaped? I, if so, on point, but uh, also a massive fucking yikes from me. And, uh... Did they dig a hole? Because that mound, it protrudes from the earth quite a, a bit. Makes it look like they didn't really dig a hole. I mean, if they had a body, did they just lay it on the ground and then put some dirt over it? I mean, the coyotes are sure to get his remains now. And not for nothing, is this type of burial really the proper way to send an entity such as Mr. Peanut to the great beyond? I mean, surely if there were any way for a strong nut to go out, it would be in a blaze of glory like getting spiked to the ground in a Texas Roadhouse restaurant. But anyway, all of your favorite mascots have come out to celebrate the once proud Nuts rich history. We've got the Kool-Aid Man, we've got Mr. Clean, and uh, that's it. Mr. Peanut didn't have too many friends, I take it. Was the Vlasic Pickle Stork unavailable? Charles Entertainment Cheese too busy spreading the plague? Only ones that were lame enough to show up showed up, huh? What is happening? That is a phenomenal question, sir. I do not know the answer to that. I'm more concerned with the fact that the Nutmobile has returned. Thought it died. Is there a fleet of Nutmobiles? Kind of makes it a little bit less special in my eyes. Also, the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile is there. That seems more like an insult. <laughs> Who drove that in? Seems a smidge insensitive. Like, could you imagine showing up to a legitimate funeral service like that? Like, yeah, sorry that your dad died. I hope the family's all right with the fact that I arrived in a 30 foot long hot dog. Of course I am incredibly drunk. Is your mom seeing anyone? I just can't get over the fact that the Wienermobile is here. 
or the Nutmobile for that matter, like, do you think upon Mr. Peanut's inevitable resurrection, he wants to see giant nuts and wieners when he died in a violent novelty food vehicle explosion? Anyways, the tears of the Kool-Aid man spark the magical happening. A plant grows from the grave spawning baby nut. If you take your scale tool and you resize Mr. Peanut, you get a new mascot. Why did they do this? The Mandalorian was massive at the time, and what was the big thing that came out of the Mandalorian? Baby Yoda. So just imagine, if you will, being in the marketing room at Planners HQ, where you got one guy who's just spaced the fuck out on whole cashew pieces and salt. So Star Wars got that baby thing going on, right? And people going nuts over it, huh? Huh? Right? Nuts? Right? Nuts? Scott, write that down. You write that down, you prick. We got a mascot. Let's make it a baby. It'll be cute, and people like cute. They'll buy nut plushes and merch with baby nut on it. It'll be great. We'll make money. Now somebody, Scott, please design me a merch section of our official website that as of October 2020 will still say coming soon. Now, in theory, this was genius. They could ape off of a current trend, they could sell merch, and get people talking about planters. Win, win, fucking win. But then something had to go and ruin it. I said earlier in this video that death is kind of a downer, and I stand by that. As such, uh, I don't really have much in terms of lighthearted material surrounding the uh, tragic Calabasas helicopter crash that took the lives of NBA star Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. Uh, but let us not also forget that there were other people aboard that helicopter who perished as well. John Kerry and Alyssa Altabelli and Ara Zobayan. May all of them rest in peace. Naturally, this event caused people in professional sports and beyond to mourn this very real and very tragic loss. I mean, the NBA even went so far as to rig a championship for the Lakers in Kobe's honor. There you go, it's the only joke I've got about it. And even if people might not correlate the real death of Kobe Bryant to the fictional death of a cartoon legume and a top hat, it's still kind of in poor taste given the similarities in the deaths, so planters wisely backed off of the baby nut stuff for a little bit. I mean, hey, the nation's gonna get over this shit eventually, right? We've got nuts itching to find their way into the mouths of paying customers everywhere. So let's just accelerate the process. Now, my assumption, I base this on nothing, is that planters had the life of this little abomination all planned out, and that the marketing was going to change with the stages of its life. Like, we were going to see it in adolescence, and puberty, and young adulthood, all the way back to his former glory as the Mr. Peanut that we knew. And I don't know much about nut physiology, but I hate the fact that planters has made me consider it maybe a thing. And just think of everything that we've missed out on with this. Like, can you imagine young adult Mr. Peanut going over his one-piece OTPs? Instead, planters went right to age 21 with it because they want to advertise that peanuts go great with beer. Observation of the century. Here is Planter's Peanut Jr. 21st birthday bar wisdom ad. Okay, so while celebrating his 21st birthday at a bar, Peanut Jr. gives his ID to the bartender and whoa, 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 whoa. Enhance. Five foot eight. Bro and I are the same height. I don't know if this feeling that I'm feeling is um, pain, but uh, I think I kind of like it. And it's whatever though, I mean, I got a solid 100 pounds on him, I fucking ruin him. Birth date, it's complicated. Man, this fake ID is weak as hell. You gonna lose your liquor license you serve to this guy. What's he gonna get anyway? Bud Light, beige water, Yuck. Just unbelievable. Ah, oh. oh, that's actually awful. Oh, oh dear. Mm, I fuck with the cashews. I do not fuck with that. That is... 
Mm, that was unpleasant. I, I mean, I've tried to outgrow being a beer snob because, I mean, let's face it, sex is light as it is lately with COVID, but I, I, I can't abide drinking that. Don't drink Bud Light, not even for a gag. And I gotta finish that too, I don't waste. I bought this today, but it was in like the back of the refrigerator. <laughs> I think it's old. Or it's fresh and it tastes old. I don't know, is that the point? Yeah, yeah, it's been a weird year. Weird year. Yeah. But hey, congratulations on turning 21, Peanut Jr. Now fast forward to the part where your brain starts to deteriorate. 27 or thereabouts. But if that's not enough wisdom for you, Planters has released a second bar wisdom ad with Peanut Jr. being 21. Let's roll it. Hey, oh, you know what would be great with this? All right, so our boy is enjoying not drinking his beer because to drink it would be irresponsible to impressionable young viewers, and we can't have that. The bartender has suggested he get something salty, crunchy, and delicious to go along with it, and our little himbo thinks that the bartender is hitting on him, which is nuts, <gasps> which is crazy because the bartender sounds like Sam Elliott, who's like infinity years older than the original Mr. Peanut. And delicious. And I know this animation is supposed to be Peanut Jr. going for a sip of his beer, but it really does look like he's blowing on it. It's like, you gotta be careful, that's really hot. That beer just came out of the oven. You gotta fluff it first, you know. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. But if you're not feeling wise yet, we got another one. Wisdom so nice, we'll do it thrice. Let's see what else they've got in terms of wisdom. Uh, you know what? Surprise me. <clears throat> Draft? Yeah, uh, it is a little chilly in here. <laughs> but I think that's enough wisdom for one day. At least that's as much as I can take. Now, we currently are still in the 21-year-old phase of this nuts existence, and uh, things ain't going well. Planters is trying to be one of the cool brands on Twitter, and the ratios are pathetic. Uh, the account has as of recording, like 136,000 followers, but very few of its posts ever crack a 1,000 likes. Like, they did one not too long ago where they said that pumpkin spice almonds oh, aren't basic, and I think it got like 600 likes. And honestly, this campaign hasn't exactly been a roaring success for planters, considering the amount of credibility, if a brand of nuts could have such a thing, was lost in the creation of this campaign to start with. Like, people dunked on it when they did the baby nut thing. It got dunked on even more when Kobe died, which is significant because Kobe dunked. Uh, they dunked on it when they decided to backpedal to turning it 21, and I'm sure it'll be dunked on whatever they do next. Even if that next thing is just going back to the original Mr. Peanut character, which might not even be too crazy because you can still buy the nuts that have the regular Mr. Peanut on it. It's not Peanut Jr. It's not Baby Nut. Like, I bought this at the store an hour ago. And this is all a shame because food mascots are incredibly easy to pull off. Like, all you have to do is have a character with a recognizable design that has a single-minded obsession with whatever your product is. Like, have them be addicted to it like it's cocaine and there you go. And companies always seem to want to update or modernize or change their mascots and it's always a disaster. Like, Cookie Crisp. Disaster. Toucan Sam. Failure. Captain Crunch. Yuck. How in the fucking what is this? But if you're gonna do something like this, you might as well go all the way. Like, have Pino Jr. lamenting that his new lease on life has been wasted for minimal gain. Have him wonder what could have been had he just stayed the course. You know, age, um... How old am I? Hey everybody, thank you for watching the comeback of As Fails on TV. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you want to support it, not necessarily monetarily, but with likes and comments and subscriptions and other algorithm-tricking interactions. All of my social media links are going to be down in the description, as well as links to my novels and my webcomic. New novel is coming soon, and pages of the webcomic are posted pretty frequently, so go check that shit out. And if you want to see a topic for As Failed on TV discussed here, head over to Patreon and donate that $10 reno. And until next time, I've been Chris, and thank you for playing along.